Hi, and welcome to Far From Home with me, Mabel Nainan, your host. So the Bible is full of stories of men and women who were immigrants or who became immigrants, like Abraham, Moses. We also have Daniel, who was taken into exile and lived out the rest of his life in Babylon. Um, we also have the story of Esther in the Bible, who was a Jew, but lived um, in Persia. And then we find stories of foreigners in the Bible. Uh, Ruth, for instance, is one of them. And one of the goals of this podcast is to highlight these stories so that we recognize how the experience of migrant people intersects with scripture. And today we are going to talk about Rahab, who was not only a foreigner, but also a prostitute, a woman of bad repute. But she plays an important role in the Bible. And I could think of none more suitable and qualified uh, than Shadia Ritchie to help us unpack the story of this biblical hero. So welcome to Far From Home, Shadia. Oh, thank you so much for having me. This is awesome. So a little bit about Shadia for those of you who don't know her. She's a passionate Bible teacher and an award-winning author who loves seeing lives transformed by the power of God's word. Shadia is the author of several Bible studies, including Tamar, Hagar, Legion, and Worthy of Love, and the recipient of many awards, including the 2022, the WCCW, is it the West Coast Christian Writers Conference? Yes, yes, yeah. that's the one. So uh, the God's Word is a live award, and she was a recipient of that award for 2022. And having experienced many heartbreaks, including abortion, day trip, divorce, and more. Shadia captures the hearts of audience as she illustrates through personal experience, God's love, faithfulness, and power of redemption. She holds a master's in biblical and theological studies, as well as a master's in criminal justice. So I have learned so much from Shadia's Bible studies. Um, and I had done Legion before even I met her. And so I'm somewhat of a fan. <laughs> consider her a friend uh, and a sister. She's part of our local writers group. So she's someone I highly respect and I admire. And it's such an honor to be talking with her. Um, so um, thank you again, Shadia. Oh, well, thank you for having you. And just uh, just having me, the, this whole subject of your of your podcast is, is such a beautiful theme. And uh, it's, just, it's an honor to be here with you, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So let's get started. So I wanted to show you. So if you're listening to the podcast, you'll probably miss this part, but I'm just showing um, the viewers of the video podcast, the cover of Rahab. It's a six week Bible study called Rediscovering the God Who Saves Me. And it's a beautiful cover. You just feel like holding it and not putting <laughs> it down. But let's talk about uh, Rahab. Um, Tell us who Rahab is and why did you write a Bible study based on this character? Um, great, great questions. I mean, Rahab is, um, so as you shared, she's she was a prostitute. She lived in the Old Testament times. She lived uh, in the city of Jericho um, during the time when God had commanded his people, the Israelites, to take the promised land uh, and to basically cleanse the land of the, of the, of the wicked uh, pagan uh, activities that were taking place, um, including in the city of Jericho. So Rahab was a prostitute who lived in this city. Um, and the reason I wanted to write a story about her, um, well, actually, I'll back up. Even when up before I finished writing the most recent study before Rahab, which was on Tamar, this is Judah's daughter-in-law, I knew I wanted to do Rahab next because Rahab follows Tamar as the second woman listed in the ancestry um, of Jesus. But what's interesting is that both of these women are tainted by prostitution. That is a, an element of both of their stories. And there's just something about these kind of messy stories uh, in the Bible that I love. Um, you know, so many of us are familiar with kind of the the more famous people in the Bible, the people we look up to, like Abraham and Esther, and 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 I love those yeah. stories. Um, these are you know strong leaders with exceptional character. Um, but for me, like I've made so many mistakes in my past. You know, you mentioned some of them and some of the things that I'm just you know sad that happened 
Um, but I find myself attracted to the stories in the Bible who, of people who made mistakes or who suffered or who were, you know, kind of looked down on. Um, mm. and so, so that's one of the reasons I really like these kinds of stories. Yeah. Um, and give us some context about uh, where Rahab's story is situated in the Bible. And um, Rahab's story occurs in Joshua 2 and 6. Mm -hmm. So can you maybe just summarize the story for us? Sure. So Rahab, she um, she enters the kind of the biblical narrative during the time when the Israelites are camped um, on the edge of the promised land. And so, as I shared, Rahab was living in the city of Jericho, and the, and the Israelites were uh, planning to cross the Jordan River and then take over the city of Jericho. So Joshua, who took over leadership of the Israelites uh, from Moses after Moses passed away, um, he sends two of his trusted spies to go into the city of Jericho and kind of bring back some military intelligence. But what happens is the spies end up at Rahab's house. Uh, this prostitute. And, you know, as you go through the story, you know, again, I'm a, like you said, I'm just going to do a kind of a quick summary, but you'll, you'll see that there, the God's hand is in all of this because she is the one person in the city, the only person in the city who's actually, rather than cowering in fear, she's actually turning to God. And so she, she protects the Israelite spies when the king's messengers who found out that the spies had come to her house. So, you know, they had informants going on, their own spies and so forth. And the king's messengers come to Rahab's house demanding that she hands over the spies, but she lies to them and she protects these Israelite spies. And so kind of long story short, uh, she rescues the spies, but, but extracts from them a promise uh, before she let them go by saying, you know, you know, promise that you will come back and save myself and my family uh, when you take the land. And she has this amazing statement of faith where she's like, I know the Lord Yahweh has has given you the land. Um, those are pretty profound words. And so God honors her for that. And later when the city is taken over, her, her home is protected. She hangs the scarlet cord in the window as she was instructed um, and God ends up rescuing her. And later on in the story, uh, she ends up actually marrying uh, one of the descendants of Judah, uh, a, a prince, he is called. Yeah. Um, and so the prostitute marries the prince. It's such an incredible story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and let's back up a little bit. Yeah. Um, so she's she's introduced to us immediately like in an action scene right there are the spies in our home and the king says give me the hand over the spies to me and she says no they're not there but she mm -hmm. just springs into action she hides them on her roof and covers them with uh flax something yes yeah and then um and so i was wondering what gave her the courage to do that and then and maybe, you know, the answer is, like you said, in her declaration here, and I just wanted to read from Joshua 2, verse 9, yes. she says, I know that the Lord has given this land to you, and that a great fear of you has fallen on us, so that all who live in this country are melting in fear because of you. We have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did to Sihon and Og the two kings of the Amorites east of the Jordan, whom you completely destroyed. And she says, again, when we heard of it, our hearts melted and everyone's courage failed mm -hmm. because of you for the Lord, your God. And this is incredible to me is God in heaven above and on earth below. I'm like, how did she believe in that so strongly? Um, and, you know, probably even, a stronger faith than uh, many of the Israelites themselves. Absolutely. Um, you know, what's very interesting is um, while the um, uh, the Israelites are camped on the other side of the Jordan, um, the scripture actually teaches in the book of Numbers that they began to, and the word literally is whore, after the gods of Moab. Mm. So you have this contrast going on where the Israelites, God's people are turning into idolatry and pagan uh, religions. And then Rahab, the prostitute, the Canaanite mm. in the wicked city is actually turning to God. 
Um, mm. And so, you know, those uh, verses that you just quoted, Joshua 2, 9 through 11, are profound. Uh, this is a profound statement of faith on her part. And each part of the of this of this uh, confession of hers uh, is is very very significant. First, she says, "I know the Lord has given you the land." Um, if the Israelites had that kind of faith, they would not have fallen into the, the the idolatry that they did. So already we see a very very strong faith uh, on her part, uh, yeah. and this can only be explained by an act of God. You know, the, the, that that faith is that, you know, scripture teaches faith is actually a gift from God. And there was something about her recognizing who God was because, you know, so like you just quoted it where she said, all of the, you know, people of the land melt away before you. They're all in fear. She, so she's explaining to the Israelites that all of the, the people, at least in her city, um, you know, are terrified. So it's not a matter of they don't know who God is. Um, she goes on and she says, we, not I, she says, we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea. In other words, for the, for the Exodus, we heard mm. how you rescued mm. your people, um, what you did to the other Kings that were on the other side of the Jordan. In other words, God's giving them victory over these very powerful kingdoms, um, and how the Israelites destroyed them. And so, uh, you know, and she says, as soon as we heard it, our hearts melted there's no spirit left in anyone because of you um because your god is god in heavens and earth and on in the heavens above and on the earth below and so she's basically saying we have all heard who your god is and we're terrified mm -hmm. so there's no excuse that mm -hmm. they didn't know the mm -hmm. only difference was is that rahab rather than turning letting her fear pull her away from god she drew cl closer to god like like he should be feared yeah, but I, but I'm gonna I want to get on his side, you know. Yeah. Um, and so that's what gives her the courage uh, to yeah. protect the Israelite spies, and by doing so, she put her life on the line mm. by yeah. lying to the king. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I love that she jumped at that opportunity. I don't yeah. think she planned for it; it just happened. So she had to think on her feet, and um, she knew about this God. Yes. And at the right time, when God gave her that opportunity, she grabbed it. Yes, yes. And and that and that reveals to us that her faith had been developing. You mm -hmm. know, it wasn't like she had just heard of the God yesterday and made a profession the next day. Like the, in her heart, she's drawing near. She's recognizing who he is. And then when the opportunity comes, she doesn't have to think because her heart and her mind is already committed. Um, yeah, it's a powerful, Absolutely. powerful story. And we've barely touched the surface. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I also think about her faith, right? Sometimes we think that only people who are, I'm quoting, like in quotes, good, moral, have strong faith. Mm -hmm. And that messed up people somehow cannot have that kind of faith in God. But here we see someone who's, you know, questionable moral character, but she has faith. So uh, that uh, faith does not have to anything to do most of the times with you know like who where you are or or your moral character absolutely i mean you know one of the things you know when jesus was on in, on the earth and in, in the new testament stories he never treated the moral religious people different kind from the you know the prostitutes tax collectors and the thieves is from his point of view, from God's point of view, we're all sinners. Um, and sin can come out looking very moral. We can become mm. proud of our morality. Um, mm. But ultimately, we're all cut from the same cloth. Yeah. And so there's there's no real, um, you know, from a human standpoint, you know, we attend to, like you said, we might judge like they're the more moral person and they're the more immoral person. But, you know, from God's point of view, until we come to Christ, um, we're all on the same boat, <laughs> heading, <laughs> heading nowhere yeah. good. Mm. Um, yeah, we're, we're all in need of redemption. Yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful point. And that and then and then the stories like Rahab, as an example, you know, then then remind those who who might feel, you know, that they aren't good enough, you know, the and rec and, and through her stories, realizing it, it doesn't matter. God will, God receives all 
who will turn to him. His heart is for all. You know, scripture says he desires that none would perish. He he cared for every person in that city, but they but those that refused to turn to him that, you know. Yeah. Mm. It's a huge significant contrast, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And 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 it comes down to faith, not morality. Because mm. morality is actually tainted until we come to Christ. It's it's not it's still we're still polluted with sin no matter what it Amen. looks like on the outside. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um one thing I also noticed from my reading of this was that she did not just save herself. She mentions for her family, right? Her brother, yes. sister, yes. and all of them. So it's like my my father and mother, my brothers and sister, and all who belong to them. So I don't know how many people these are, but she thought of her entire family. And because of her, all of them, I mean, you know, from Joshua 6, everybody that she sheltered in her home were first rescued before yes. the Israelites destroyed Jericho. And yes. so that's also admirable to me that she was thinking of all of them. She was. And what's, you know, when you go through, uh, so like, you know, obviously in the Bible study, you go through in far more detail, but there's this aspect when the, when she allows the two spies to escape out the window, she could have saved herself right then and there. Mm. You know, there was an open door, so to speak. Um, she could have gone out with the spies and she would have been safe. And that would have been the end of it. But she chose to stay behind, risking being exposed to the, you know, getting, letting the king find out that she's, was a bit, you know, uh, um, betrayed them. Um, she risked the battle that was to come. She risked that the spies would not be true to their word. I mean, she took a lot of risks in order to save her family. Um, and so, and, and so it's a beautiful picture uh, of her heart. And again, in this, in the study, we go through the details that explains how I know some of the things I'm going to share, for example, that she lived alone. Um, mm. and again, this, the study will, will, will reveal all that and, and all, and all that we studied to, to determine those things. But what that tells us is, you know, her family was not with her. And so mm. was there a fractured relationship? What, you know, what, what, what did it all look like? We don't know. Um, mm. but she cared enough to put whatever, was what whatever her experience in life was whatever led her to become a prostitute in the first place you know sometimes people in those days became prostitutes to pay off family debt like yeah. they were kind of sold into it you know um the, you know there's a, we just don't know all those things but the beauty um as you shared is that she wanted her family saved right all the nieces nephews you know everyone like that belonged <laughs> to them everyone yeah. who was willing to take refuge in her home mm. would be saved yeah yeah that's incredible. Yes. Um, and so talk to us about the significance of this story when we consider the entire story of the Bible. Oh, that's a great question. Um, so like on the on the surface, you know, it, it seems like we have a story about, um, you know, a prostitute in a pagan city. You know, she protects the spies of the Israelite spies she saved uh, in the end. Uh, so that's what kind of, you know, that's the storyline. That's what's happening. Um, but there's so much actual theological significance to her story because, first of all, she enters the story right when the Israelites are about to enter, enter the promised land. I mean, the Israelites had been waiting for generations, dreaming for this day. Um, and then in between Joshua chapter one, where God gives the command to Joshua to cross over into the Jordan River, in between that command and Joshua chapter three, where the Israelites actually do cross over uh, into the into over the Jordan into the promised land, we have Joshua chapter two, the story mm -hmm of Rahab. And so, you know, God could have just kind of skipped over it. Like, you know, the spies went in, learned the people were afraid, the spies went out, that would be the end. But God took that entire chapter to tell us the story of Rahab. He put the entire conquest story, which is what, you know, most of the Old, Old Testament story is, is surrounding, you know, the conquest of the promised land, the promised child, mm -hmm. the promised land, all of these promises. And God puts all of that those those significant events quote on hold to save the life of a Canaanite prostitute who feared the Lord. Mm. 
I mean, what looks like an interruption to the conquest story is actually nothing short of God's divine intervention. This is highly significant. Um, and the fact that her story is recounted in several, not just one, but several key faith passages in the New Testament, the book of James, the book of Hebrews, uh, it further uh, um, um, confirms this, this tremendous theological significance to her story um, in the Bible. Very, very significant. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Um, and you said in the study that her story is our story. Mm. Can you elaborate on that? Oh, yeah. I mean, so if you think about the Bible as a whole, all, the, the entire Bible is basically a picture of God's passionate pursuit of his adulterous bride. I mean, throughout mm -hmm. the Old Testament, God's people are accused of whoring after idols, betraying God, who is their husband, he's described. Um, they're described as prostituting themselves. All this language about adultery, prostitution, uh, whoring is, is throughout the Old Testament. And it's God's people that are accused. Uh, and in the same way, New says it's the same thing. You know, um, you know it's not about the, the, the Jewish people, the Israelites. It, it's basically just humanity. And these are the people that God started his, his uh, creating his nation from. Um, but through it all, through all of this adultery, through all of this rebellion against God, God is orchestrating his plan of salvation, um, which is basically to woo his bride back to himself. And, and that's us. Mm -hmm. Rahab's story is our story because it tells us that not, no matter who we are, what we've done, God is ready to embrace everyone who's willing to turn to him to be saved. You know, Rahab the prostitute becomes not only got part of God's covenant line of Judah and become an ancestor. And we are described in the New Testament as Christians, we are described as the bride of Christ. And so we, apart from Christ, we're the prostitute. We're the ones rebelling against God. We're the ones living outside of God's will and, and, and betraying him. But through Christ, we become his bride. And so mm -hmm. that's how Rahab's story, the prostitute who marries uh, the prince of Judah, um, is our story. It, her, it's a reflection of the bigger picture of God's pursuit of his adulterous bride. Amen. That's beautiful. And so tell us, um, for those of us, you who are watching again, this is a Rahab Bible study, a six-week Bible study. What do you think readers will gain from um, doing this Bible study? And why do you think it is relevant for mm. our times, relevant to our times? And that's a great question. I mean, you know, one of the things is that I'm just, just noticing in the kind of the Christian world today is, you know, we're very uh, much like our culture. We're very, you know, we're, we're, our lives are very fast paced, um, instant results, a uh, frenzied way of life. And so many Christians are beginning to, you know, create a habit of leaning on a Bible verse, uh, mm. you know, as, as their spiritual nourishment for the day or for the week. But the Bible, except maybe the book of Proverbs, wasn't written to be understood in verses. Mm. Uh, it just wasn't written that way. And, and, that, and that's why I think so many Christians are feeling empty and longing for deeper intimacy with God and engagement with his word uh, and, and they don't know where to begin and so mm -hmm. Rahab's story is the perfect place to step back into and to see God's God's story and rediscover how all of the Bible is interconnected mm -hmm. um, her story foreshadows events she could have never imagined um, you know uh, first of all her story is tied to the fulfillment of God's promise to give Abraham's descendants the promised land. That, yeah. we, you know, we're so kind of far removed from that, you know, the Old Testament and, and th those things that we forget that this is highly, highly significant to the Bible. Um, and in the New Testament, she's holds a very distinguished place in Hebrews chapter 11, what we typically call kind of the, the hall of faith. Um, this, this, is, this makes her story very significant and what we can learn from it. Um, her story is reflected in the book of Revelation, 
Um, mm -hmm. These parallels between the battle for the promised land, the final battle at Jerusalem. Uh, we have the contrast of Rahab the prostitute. Then we have the great prostitute. Um, these are the kinds of connections uh, in the Bible that open our eyes uh, to know God on a deeper level. Um, and I think that's what we're missing today. And, and that's what's so important about doing some deep Bible study. Um, and it also, what to me, this is what makes the Bible so much fun is seeing yeah. how it's all interconnected and how it relates to us today. Yeah, that's beautiful. And like you said, you know, when, when we do Bible studies like these, it also helps us um, appreciate the Bible and, and maybe lead us to spending more time in the Bible. We don't want to, our, uh, to just do the six week Bible study and stop. Like we want to keep on getting deeper into God's word and Bible studies like yours are useful tools for us to do that. And they kind of fuel our love for God's word. And so uh, <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for sharing your heart about um, Rahab, yeah, the Bible study that you wrote and this just released. If you want a signed copy of this Bible study, you can go to RahabBibleStudy.com and you can do this Bible study on your own, invite your friends um, and, you know, set up your own uh, Bible study in your home, or you can introduce your women's ministry leader to this Bible study. I have just begun, um, I just began doing Rahab and I... I'm looking forward to it after speaking to you even more. And um, I've enjoyed your previous study. So if for anyone who's listening, this is your first Bible study. I'm sure after you finish, you'll pick up more of Sharia's Bible studies. She's also doing a giveaway for the rest of the month. Um, Sharia and her team, they're giving away one book every day. Till every week. Every week. <laughs> every week uh, till the end of November. So the link to the giveaway is in the show notes. Thank you, Sharia, so much. This was a pleasure and an honor, a blessing to have you. Oh, it was always fun to chat with you and you had such great questions. I appreciate it.